everybody, welcome to a kind of late September favourites. I'm really sorry, I was like, how have I not done a September favourites? I knew there was something missing and I knew I hadn't done something and then it occurred to me that it was in fact my September favourites and it feels weird to just leave one out. So I have to do it. I'm gonna apologise now, you might not be able to tell and I might just be pointing it out to you and you wouldn't have known either way, but I have two of the most painful, bulging, disgusting, weepy cold sores on my lip and I've attempted to cover it over for this video. I don't know why I did that because it's really freaking painful and the second I finished it I'm gonna wipe this off and the reason that I'm saying that is because I really wanted to film um, my autumn makeup look which is essentially this but with like eyeshadow and a little bit more like gold and I couldn't because <laughs> what this looks like without lipstick on is kind of terrifying I mean it fits in with the theme of Halloween but it looked hideous and I was like I just don't think people want to see my weeping cold sores like exposed so I'm going to save that and switch these videos around and I'm going to do that next week so for now I'm going to do my late September faves I'm going to start with a cleanser and this is the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser Conditioning Face Wash. It actually doesn't look like I've used any. I took this on holiday with me and I was also using this before I went away on holiday um, as my second cleanse. Now everyone is going gaga over Glossier at the moment. I believe it was available in the States and now it is available in the UK which means that now that I'm talking about it people watching in the UK can actually get hold of it which is great. The reason I like this is a the consistency it's a like jelly consistency but then it feels very soft and it kind of thins down which is really really nice i apologize if you can hear nala snoring she's already fallen asleep clearly i am that uninteresting it doesn't have too much of a smell it smells kind of very lightly of rose which isn't too like off-putting for my nose because I don't really like the smell of rose. This is all very rhymey, nose and rose. I don't really like the smell of rose, but this isn't too um, offensive. It's very light and it's very, f uh, it's very fresh rose scent. So I really, really love that. I like how it makes my skin feel. It's really nice and easy to use. I just pop it on and then I get my hands a bit wet and then I kind of like rub it all around my face and then I get rid of it with a flannel and it makes my skin feel so soft. Oh my goodness. I think the fact that it's a conditioning face wash does mean that when you finish with this, you're like, honestly, I do this on my skin and I'm just like, oh, someone's gonna ring my doorbell. They don't know how to ring the doorbell. BRB. I have two hair favorites this month. The first one, is the Maria Neela dry shampoo. Although, I feel like this isn't your normal dry shampoo. This is more, I would say, for if you feel like you need volume and like, you know that feeling when you back comb your roots and it just, you go like that and it just stays. That is what this does. This is like a styling product more, I think. Yes, it makes your hair look less greasy. I wouldn't say, I would use this if I wanted to feel like I had completely clean, sleek, soft hair. It's not that kind of dry shampoo. It's more the kind of dry shampoo when you feel like your hair is really limp and lifeless. And yes, it's a bit greasy, but mostly you just feel like you can't really do anything with it. You can't really style it. And it just looks a bit flat. Kind of like my hair today. It's a very flat, very flat hair day today. Um, this is perfect for that. Literally spray it in your roots. Give it a little rub. I might put a little bit in. Whoa. It's so good. So essentially, it's kind of a dry shampoo slash hairspray slash back home in a bottle styler and I really, really like it. I, I don't know if I've put this in a favorites before. Maybe I have, I can't remember, but it's the Way Hair Oil. All oh, this smells so good. Way is the brand um, by Jen Atkin, um, who is a celebrity hair stylist, hair extraordinaire, 
just basically overall hair goddess and this is her brand Way Hair Care. I use quite a lot of the products in the brand and I really really like them and highly recommend them. The oil though is something I basically am a little bit obsessed with. I'm gonna put a tiny bit, I'm basically doing my hair in this video, I just put a tiny bit on my hands like after I've um, washed and styled my hair and I just run it through the ends just to make sure that they're not like super frizzy just to give it a bit of a shine help take care of the hair yeah I just really like it, it smells fab and also this lasts so like I've been using this for like a year like look at it it looks like I've barely touched it because you only need to use a tiny amount every time moving back to skincare I probably should have done this after the cleanser is nothing new i've used this a fair amount i have seen so many people talking about this over the years in fact this is actually one of mark's like holy grail products whenever i see him doing his skincare he is mostly patting this delicately into his skin and it is the la roche posay effaclar duo i think that's how you pronounce it effaclar duo this is an anti-imperfections corrector corrective unclogging care anti-imperfections anti-marks now i have been on a bit of a skincare journey which i think i'll probably do a whole other video on or do a more in-depth chat on on my vlogging channel i haven't quite decided yet a journey that i have not yet completed i don't think almost i feel like i don't want to talk about it until i'm in a place where i'm like yeah this worked now i can like talk about it but one of the products that I think has made a huge difference is this because as I have mentioned in previous videos although if you're new here you may not have heard me talk about it before is whenever I get a spot or a blemish or a blackhead or, t or a tiny little pimple or even if I have a bite or a cold sore everything on my face or everything that has anything to do with my skin takes so long to heal and the marks just stay around for so long it's almost like you can see every like layer of my skin and on every single layer is a mark or a spot from some time ago and so uh one of the things i have been doing um alongside other things is using this and i do feel like it has made a huge huge difference this is kind of like a serum so you would just put this on after you've cleansed before your moisturizer and again in the evening um it's really light it's not agitating on my skin at all and I know there is a reason that so many people rave about this. It's great. Another thing which actually I did take on holiday and is a little bit more of a summer lip colour is the Coco by Kylie Cosmetics Matte Liquid Lipstick in the shade Doll. This is a bright orange red. This is like fire in a tube and I love it. I've not worn orange lipstick in a really long time and I feel like orange is a is a shade of lipstick that does suit me, does suit my skin tone um, and especially when I have a bit of a tan I just think it looks good. I think it's because I have blue eyes and orange and blue are the opposite sides of the spectrum so they complement each other. I don't know but I think that's a thing. And I really like the consistency of this, it's matte and matte lips are my favourite to wear doesn't feel uncomfortable and was pretty much like a staple for the evenings uh, when I was away on holiday. So I just really, really, really like this colour. Another thing which is kind of September slash October fave, um, because I used it, when did I start using this? The vlog for it went up not too long ago, but I feel like it was right at the beginning of October. So this is technically an October favourite if we're going to get very specific, but I couldn't wait another month to tell you about this so I've kind of snuck it in here and it is the Fenty Beauty foundation I love this I absolutely love this I uploaded a vlog um, it was the Halloween shopping vlog with Mark where I was uh, trying this out for the first time so if you want to go and see like me trying it on and my first impressions I'll leave a link to that vlog in the description box to be honest I'd seen a few people's reviews and I'd heard quite a lot about it and uh, I just kind of thought, oh, it might be worth a try, but I didn't have like high hopes or high expectations because it is a semi-matte finish, soft matte long wear foundation. I don't really like matte foundations generally. Um, I much prefer something with a bit more of a dewy finish. So I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. 
I might like it, I don't know, we'll soon see. Turns out this foundation is so great. I absolutely love it. I love the formulation. I love all the different colours that it comes in so many colours and actually thankfully I bought this on the Harvey Nichols website and I, and I managed to get my shade right for once. I don't know how I managed to do that but I did and I also bought a slightly lighter one because obviously I'd come back off holiday so at some point this won't be my skin colour but for now it's great. It's very liquidy as you can see I've got some like dripping down the spout but it blends really well and it lasts really well and what it looks like on the skin is really nice and it's, I don't know, it's just a very easy enjoyable foundation and unless you have really dry skin I wouldn't recommend it but if you have like oily combination I think you'll really like this and alongside it I've been using this brush which I haven't cleaned for the purpose of this video which I probably should have it's the uh, Fenty Beauty foundation brush in 1110 I love this but then I do love all brushes that are quite compact like this it's kind of like the um, is it the buffer brush by Real Techniques buffing brush I just love brushes like this and this one is beaut, I love the design, I love how it makes the foundation go on and yeah, I've been using that like every day. This is quite random and the only reason I'm really putting this in here is because so many people ask me why my teeth are so white and I don't whiten them, the only thing I can put it down to is my toothpaste and I was having a conversation with someone the other day, I think it was my mum and she was like what toothpaste are you using because your teeth just seem to be getting whiter and whiter and it is the Oral-B, I've definitely put this in a favourites before, it's the Oral-B 3D White Luxe in Glamorous White and the 3D White Luxe in Glamorous Shine. I'm basically using both of these and that is all. Bearing in mind though that I do not smoke, I do not drink black tea or coffee and I do not drink coke or red wine so anything that could potentially stain my teeth I don't do. <laughs> I do think the reason my teeth are white is because of these uh, toothpastes because I mean I, it couldn't be anything else to be honest. <laughs> Bath time I have been using and obsessing over the Zoella Beauty bath milk powders. I freaking love them. I think it's one of my favourite product products? Favourite products I have ever brought out because it's such a different like bath time experience and don't get me wrong I love a bath bomb and I love bubbles but sometimes you don't want that sometimes you just want to like feel like your skin is in like some kind of conditioning treatment and I feel like that's what I feel like whenever I use one of these this one's actually from the Christmas um collection so these are the um splash of milk bath powders and they come in little sachets inside, like that. And then um, you can use one sachet for a bath. If you're gonna push the boat out, you can put two in, um, but one is enough, basically. So you literally tear this off and you just sprinkle this into your bath, get in, and it's like, it's like bathing in silk. I love it, I love what it feels like. I love the feeling on my skin and I'm just basically a little bit obsessed. The reason there's two of these is because this comes as like a duo as part of the Christmas range. So in this you've got um, tea bags, little bath time tea bags. But you can also get them in this little tin and this one came out with the jelly and gelato range earlier on in the year. But you can still get these. And again, it's got the little sachets in it. I just love them. Especially this time of year when you feel like your skin needs a little bit more of a boost. Two random things. I don't have many random things in this, which I feel a bit sad about because I feel like my last two favorites were really random. But uh, the only thing I can really show you in terms of like food are these and I only have one left. I had three, I kept one of each flavour in a little bowl and I even said to Alfie, don't eat these okay because I want to put them in my favourites and he was like, your brother's coming, he's going to eat them. I was like, no he won't, he doesn't really eat sweets. Joe ate two of these yesterday, so now I only have one flavour to show you. Fabulously though, it is the one flavour that is my favourite, so that's fine. <laughs> these are the Malwam Sour Stripes. I bought these in Waitrose because they had them in like the Halloween section. Oh my goodness. I like these like stripey things by Malwam anyway, and I really like sour sweets. So putting the two together is actually making my mouth like 
fill with saliva thinking about eating these because they are really sour. So putting those two things together does make for my perfect treat. This one in particular, which is my favourite one, is the strawberry and rhubarb flavour. I know that rhubarb is quite an acquired taste, I feel like you either like it or you really don't like it, but these are so flipping delicious. I'm so happy that this one is the one that's left. And lastly, um, I am going to feature this book because I read this on holiday and I absolutely loved it. This is Lily Collins Unfiltered. No shame, no regrets, just me. It's, I don't want to say it's like an autobiography because it's not really about her life in that sense. It's more things that have happened to her that have changed her and she's kind of passing on that advice which I really really liked. I thought it was such a good way of sharing parts of your life that you might not normally share and that's not just like facts and kind of where you grew up and it's not just about like her entire life, it was more the things that had an impact on her and the things that changed her and the things that shaped her and also other things that she could then pass on like pieces of advice. When I was reading this on holiday, I wanted to like fold the pages where I was like, I must remember that. I must remember that quote. And there were so many parts in this book that I could completely relate to. Others maybe not so much, but it was really interesting to read about the way she handled certain situations in her life. And it was really eye-opening and also very inspiring. And I think it would have been the perfect book for me to have read when I was around that age of like, 17, 18, 19, when everything seems a bit daunting and you've kind of left school and you're thinking, what is my life? I feel like this would have been very comforting to me at that time. So uh, yeah, I would highly, highly recommend you read this book. It just made me absolutely fall in love with her and I think you would uh, really take something from it. So if you need something to read, I would definitely pick this up. And that is everything that I wanted to share with you as part of my September favourites this month. I really hope you guys liked it. And as always, oh, hello, Nala. And as always, let me know what you've been loving in the comments. Let me know if you've tried these because I need to share my love of them with someone else. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.